sometimes it's better to show rather than tell. So when I tell you that <laughs> the hurricane is a force of nature, you're probably going to believe me. Recently, I jumped behind the sticks of a hurricane with a well-known YouTuber and streamer by the name of Avenger1, who covers a lot of PvP content in Star Citizen, including providing instruction to people who want to learn how to bring their dogfighting skills to a whole nother level. He taught me the ropes of basic PvP combat in the current meta, and how to properly fly a hurricane, which really is a lot more advanced than I thought it would be. There's a lot more nuanced dogfighting in Star Citizen than I think the game really lets on because really it is actually quite approachable on a beginner level when you're starting to fly. And so I want to take some time to introduce you guys to the Anvil Hurricane because I've never really covered it on my channel. That way you can decide whether or not it might be the ship for you and a buddy to hop into Star Citizen with if you're looking to get into PvP combat. So in a moment, I'll take you guys through its basic kit, so what kind of armament and components it's going to have, and then I'm going to walk you guys more through my experience with flying it and how you might better utilize it to be effective in PvP. But quick disclaimer here, I'm not really an expert pilot, I'm just going to give you guys a brief overview of what I've learned from Adventure 1. So if you guys want to find out more about how to be a really great pilot, you should check out his channel, which I'll provide down in the description below. And by the end, I think you guys might discover, as I did, that the Hurricane challenges the idea of two ships, two pilots being better than two pilots, one ship. Oh, and if you think I did a good job by the end and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button because it really helps me out and helps me grow the channel. Thank you guys for all your amazing support. So let's begin with the ship's specifications. Being classified as a heavy fighter, the armament is going to be quite a bit more impressive than those, say, in the medium and lightweight class. The turret comes with four size 3 weapons, which by itself is actually the equivalent to the DPS of one of the best fighters in the game. The big difference here is that it can be fired for a lot longer because turrets actually have a much bigger capacitor pool, which translates into you being able to take on multiple different bandits before you have to recharge your capacitor pool. But it's not just the turret gunner that gets to have fun in the hurricane, because the pilot also has access to two size 4 hardpoints, which is what I usually run. I usually swap out the gimbaled weapons for some fixed weapons like these attrition 4s, which gives me a lot more firepower to be able to take on stuff like even light fighters to heavy, big ships like the Hammerhead. But a lot of firepower isn't too great if the ship is too squishy. Luckily, the hurricane is quite a bit more beefy than it used to be when it first came out. Now it has two size 1 coolers, but a size 2 power plant and a size 2 shield, along with a size 1 quantum drive. The size 2 shield and size 2 power plant mean that it can take a lot of damage before it finally goes down, so you can stay in a fight for a little bit longer than a medium and light fighter. But finally, one of the more important attributes of the Hurricane that you're not going to find in any kind of specification sheet is its acceleration and turn rate. The two powerful engines on the back actually enable it to keep up with light fighters. Now, it can't outrun them, but it can keep up, especially in a turning battle, like a dogfight. It's not going to turn faster, but it's just barely fast enough so that you can keep the guns on the target if you're a good pilot and you know how to utilize the ship's thrusters, which I'm going to go over with you in just a moment. Now, all of this might make the Hurricane seem like the pay-to-win ship of Star Citizen, the ship that's going to defeat all other ships and make you the king of the battlefield. Well, on paper, the Hurricane will certainly be able to kill any light fighter and medium fighter in its path. In reality, it's a lot more complicated than that. I think it's really worth reiterating this for those of you who are new and coming into Star Citizen right now. At the moment, there is no such thing as pay-to-win Star Citizen, regardless of what people tell you. This may eventually change, but for the moment, it 100% comes down to the person behind the sticks. I mean, if you want any proof, watch Avenger 1's video where he takes on a bunch of people with a prospector. That's a mining ship if you don't know. But once again, rather than just telling you, let me show you in one of the examples I recorded with Avenger 1 when he was teaching me how to fly the Hurricane. So in this clip here, I'm taking on four different pilots at once. Two of them are working together and the others are just kind of trying to get in on the action. The two working together are a Blade and a Talon. The odd man out, I think, is the Gladius, and then you have a 
a star fair buzzing around trying to hit me with its big size force. If I stay put, I'll definitely die, but I'm not going to do that. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to get in a bit of a turn rate battle with this Gladius. I'm trying to get close enough where I can use my rear thrusters, my bottom thrusters, and my side strafing thrusters all at once to do what's called tri-quartering. So I'm using as many thrusters as I can to maximize the turn rate of the ship, which really just means that I'm turning up into the left or up into the right at all times to get my nose on target and provide a target for my gunner. The other thing I'm doing here is actually trying to turn as smoothly as possible. Not being too jittery allows my gunner to better select the target and hit the pips so that we can get registered hits. And you can see there, I just got one of the gladiuses. Now you can see the talon and the blade coming in and they're working together in a pretty tight formation. So they definitely have some experience working together. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to disengage by getting a little bit out of their gun range zone, which is just over a thousand meters. They're not going to be able to hit me over that range. So you can see I flew right past them again to try to give me some space to recharge my shields. But now what I'm going to do is try to separate them and pick them off one by one. Now here I've actually got the blade separated a bit, so I'm going to engage him as the Talon overshoots me. Again, utilizing my rear thrusters, my bottom and side strafing thrusters to maximize my turn rate and turning as smoothly as possible. But this, this blade really is giving me a lot of trouble. It's extremely maneuverable and extremely powerful. So it's pretty dangerous, high threat. I need to get rid of it fast. Now you'll see that he just flew off because I got his shields down and I'm gonna do the same. So I'm gonna disengage here. Again, I'm considering my position, watching my shields, watching my power to make sure that I have the advantage. They're grouping up again. Now I'm going to re-engage with the blade, get rid of that guy first because he's way more dangerous than the Talon. One of the ways that you can tell a really experienced pilot from one that's not so experienced is the way they approach you. Notice how this blade is actually turning kind of in like a helix pattern as he approaches me. This is to make sure that I don't hit him as accurately as if he were just flying straight at me. This is how I know this guy's pretty good. You see how he's turning? He's trying to deflect the shots. Well, I'm trying to match that so that my gunner can hit as many shots as possible. A lot of these are actually missing, but I just got him with my nose guns. I was able to turn on him and I got him now. All that's left really is the Starfare, which isn't a threat so long as I stay away, and the Talon, which I will definitely out DPS. And a 1v1, this thing has no chance versus me, and he's dead. Now all I've got left is the Starfare, which admittedly is going to be hard to kill, but as long as I stay behind the ship, I'm not gonna get killed myself. Now the way I'm talking here, it might seem like I'm really good at this. I'm really not. When I was recording this clip, I had Avenger 1 in the turret seat, kind of coaching me on how to position myself best so that I could take advantage of the ship. If I had done something stupid, like tried to take on both the Talon and the Blade simultaneously without trying to separate them, I would have been dead, and in that case, uh, 2v2, two people in one ship versus two people in two ships, the two ships would have definitely come out on top. I mean, you'll notice if you're a really good pilot that I didn't even talk about the power triangle here. I didn't talk about trying to intercept a target's trajectory. I didn't talk about uh, how I'm managing my shields because I'm doing all these things in the background, but this video would be way too complex, too much to throw at you at once if I talked to you about all of these things right now. I think, again, this is something better for Avenger 1 to explain, because he's more experienced at this than I am, and he's going to be able to use terminology that better describes what you're supposed to do. So what I'm trying to show you here, guys, is not my skill, but rather what I want to show you here, guys, and illustrate with this footage is that two players who are relatively inexperienced with working together can actually, given the right situation and positioning, be more effective than two highly skilled players flying in close formation in meta fighters. And this comes down to the fact that it's actually extremely difficult to keep in formation if you're fighting somebody who knows how to separate you. It takes a lot of situational awareness, a lot of practice, a lot of experience to be able to stay on your wingman's formation. Because literally in a split second, you can be several thousand meters away if you've been separated. And, and at that range, you're not going to be able to effectively cover your buddy's back. So wrapping this up for you guys, if you're relatively new to BVP and you want to fly with a friend, the Hurricane is an excellent option for you to get into a meta fighter with a buddy and be way more effective than say both of you guys flying in two ships. That is to say if you don't have a lot of experience flying together. If on the other hand you want to do a lot of practice in formation flying, then you might be more effective than the Hurricane, but that is going to take a heck of a lot more skill to pull off. 
And so I think in most situations, the hurricane is actually going to be a better option. Just make sure to run away if everybody focus fires you, which is very likely to happen in the hurricane. Trust me, it's happened to me quite a lot. But what do you think? Have I turned you on to the Anvil Hurricane? Is this a ship that you're going to look into getting come maybe next week when they have the ship showdown? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm really interested to see your thoughts. And finally, a very special thank you to Avenger 1, who taught me a heck of a lot about how to fly this thing. I had a ton of fun. I can't wait to do it again. See you guys in the next one.